proprietess, proprietor, proprietor, proprietor person. I'm the owner of Studio Rubiano Workshops and I am here today to share with you my one of my favorite products that I've been working with lately in my artwork, Inkjet Shrink Film by Graphics, and how to pair it with some phenomenal stencils, well they're all phenomenal, from Stencil Girl Stencils, um, to create a finished product that is just really fun and fantastic. So. I'm going to give you a quick overview of our materials and then I will jump into basically a, a tips and techniques section. So here we go. So as I said, inkjet shrink film by graphics. You want to make sure to get the opaque white. Be positive it says inkjet. This really will not work on regular shrink film. The inkjet has a coating on it that the ink and other things that we will use in the stencils can bond to. So if you use just regular shrink plastic, it could slide right off and then you'd be sad. Then of course, stars of the show, stencils by a stencil girl. I use the, I believe they're the six by six, let's see. Nope, seven by seven. Seven by seven I found the, wow, those words are just going. <laughs> the scale, there we go. The scale works well for what we are working with. So you have those two things you'll need a cutting mat and some wax paper, a little bit of carpenter's tape or masking tape. Um, pigment inks, I love the inks by Colorbox, or you can use stays on permanent inks or ink, no, it's been a long time since I've rubber stamped. <laughs> There's a word for these dye based inks, thank you, thanks, okay, dye based inks. Uh, little cosmetic sponges, uh, disposable cosmetic sponges are handy to have. An X-Acto knife, Sharpie, Micron pins if you have them are good, a nice sharp pair of scissors for cutting the shrink plastic. I also love these Carb Othello pastel pencils. They're great for adding a little bit of extra design work to your shrink plastic before we shrink it. And then what you're going to want to do after you cut all of this out, you're going to want and, and shrink them, you're going to want to seal it with a matte finish and I'll go over why when we get to that point. So pretty basic supply group and I think that is all of it. So I will go ahead and move on to our first project. And I'm gonna sneak back in here and maybe show you what we're, what we're gonna be making. So we are going to be printing images on the shrink plastic and then stenciling on them so that you have these wonderful plastic pieces that you can do fun things with, all sorts of fun things once they have been shrunken, so there you go. That's what we're doing, and now this time I really am going to move on to the next section. So when I'm looking for images to use with stencils, I look for outfits that have quite a bit of open space, either white or even I've stenciled over dark colors as well. And there should be a link for a page like this in your in the, in the blog post. So what you're going to do is take your shrink plastic and run it through your printer. You want to make sure that you have your printer set to accept a thicker paper like cardstock because if you have it on just a regular paper setting this won't go through very well. If you have problems getting it through the printer sometimes you can run a piece of masking tape along the edge or um, tape it double-sided tape to a regular piece of copy paper and feed it through. Sometimes the, the plastic's too slick and your printer won't want to pick it up in the feed. This product is coated on both sides, so if you do manage to not ha be happy with your print that you get, you can always flip it over and run it through again. Now, I like to rough cut all of my images out just so I'm kind of aware of where my fingers are at at all times because this coating, once the ink is on it, it's still ink and your heat and moisture in your hands can actually interact with the ink and change it. You can get a nice bright red color, big thumbprint in the middle if you're not careful. Also, if you try and cut these out too soon, I recommend waiting at least a couple of hours after you print, if not 24 hours, then just kind of really get that ink to set into that coating. When you're cutting out, you can get, so I was going to say, you can get kind of a blue line. I like to try and hold it in an area that's white, or once I get going, 
hold it along the edges, do my best not to touch. And I learned that the hard way. I have a lot of early projects that have some extra color in them, which is just a design opportunity. You can go back and color over it later. It's not a big deal. So now you just want to cut out following the lines. Um, some of my earlier sheets, I did leave an outline around them just because, you know, a girl in white on a white background is kind of hard to see. Also, if you didn't want to cut in some areas, like if they had an arm that's open, you wouldn't have to get in there and cut that out. You just have a little background, it wouldn't be glaring white. So I'm just going to cut this out. There you go. Now she's all cut out and as you can see I printed out a couple of sheets and cut out quite a few small ones as well. So this product even though on some of the packaging it says it's going to shrink 20% it's more like 50% so something of this size is going to shrink down to about that and let's see one of these girls whoops pardon my reach she'll shrink down to about like this. So as you can see, quite a variety or variance in size. That's ma what makes it fun. And, and the really great thing about this product is the detail is retained as it shrinks. And so when I was originally working on a, a project where I was trying to figure out different ways to add color to these images, and I thought about stencils, and it just was so much fun because they shrink down and you retain that detail. So it's just, it's very exciting to watch them shrink down. So I will show you how we are going to set that up next. So to make this look like we really know what we're doing when somebody, or what we were doing when somebody looks at the finished product, we're going to use a mask so that our stencil just goes on the outfit part and hopefully not over the face or the legs or the hands, which I've done before. And again, design opportunity. Somebody who's into tattoos or what have you. So you have your piece that you have cut out. I have my wax paper and my cutting mat. I'm going to put my person here under. I'm going to take my Sharpie and do just a really rough outline of the clothing, the area that I want to mask off. So just run a line along the edge doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, many times it's, my, whoops, it's not even close to being perfect, but so everything that's kind of within, that's kind of, that is within this area is what we want to be masking or to open up. So I leave the wax paper over her face, over her hands, over the legs. I mean, cut out this part here. Easiest way is just to take a X-Acto blade. You can use scissors as well. But cut just to the inside of that line. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And if you want it to be perfect, by all means, I'm a recovering perfectionist, so I try to look, give myself a little, cut myself a little slack. Oh yes, and I'm back with the microphone in the right place. I apologize for the per first part of the videos that had me sounding like I was talking through a tin can. Hey, at least it was close by and you could hear what I was saying. I didn't have to refilm it all. Try not to tear the little bits there because covering that hand is rather important. That's why we're doing a mask. I 
And I know this is tedious, but if you are using the same girl several times, you actually can reuse this mask. So a little time and effort. So now you can see, when you put her back under, her hands are masked off her face and anything we stencil is going to be right here in the center. Now you can keep this if you decide, hey, I actually want to buck the trend and I'm going to screen out her outfit and tattoo her face and arms and legs with stencils. Go for it. I am not here to cramp anybody's design aesthetic. Now, I do like to... I don't ever tape the the plastic down because I don't want it to be unlevel. Is that a word? Not level. So I will do my very best. I will take some of the carpenter's tape, painter's tape. I take a little fiddling, but again, it's so worth it. Just to kind of keep that in place. Then you're going to select a stencil to use. And again, these seven by seven stencils seem to work pretty well for this size project. So um, I'm going to start with my all time favorite. This is the one that I used back when I was doing those first projects I mentioned. I just love the design on this one. And I will have a list again of the stencils I used this one is S150, it says Maine at the end. I think it's called Gigi. But I love the floral, but with combined with the little. And so you just kind of, you know, with as you do with stencils, move it around and see placement kind of where you think you would like it to be. And again, I'm going to tape the stencil in place because I'm going to be doing a lot of back and forth movement and I don't want it to wiggle too much. So this is where our cosmetic sponge comes in. I love this particular color box, the way they do these where you can pop these pieces out, the ink pads out. Or if you have the little individual ones, cat size and things like that, that works as well. So I'm just going to pick up some ink on my cosmetic sponge. Now another thing to keep in mind is as this shrinks the color will intensify. So just kind of be aware of that if you're going to make it super dark then load up on the color. If you want it to not be super dark then don't put as much color on. And now I'm not worried about going over her face and hands and everything because remember they are covered with the wax paper. I like using the cosmetic sponges with the inks because it gives a nice coverage, even coverage, and doesn't sneak under the stencil too badly. So you get a crisp stencil. Nobody likes soggy stencils. Or maybe some people do. Again, not judging. Stencil, I mean stencil, well, yeah. Apply color to your stencil everywhere. There's a space on your outfit. It's looking pretty good. Now for the best part, the big reveal. Never gets old, does it? Stenciling. Gently pick it up. Oh, fantastic. Now, um, as I mentioned before, you can, let's also, while we have our pen down, let's pick up just a little bit of this color off the wax paper, because like I said, we're going to use it again. See, so those stencils just look fan. Ah, she's jumping. Fantastic. Now this is pigment ink. It is wet. It's 
going to stay wet until you shrink this. And the great thing about this coating that's on here, not sure the science behind it, but the ink bonds to it. And once these have shrunk, it it doesn't go anywhere. It's, it's on there. The finished pieces have kind of a nubbly surface, which I like. Um, some people are disappointed because it's not smooth, but again, you know, it's that coating. Now you can see my mask was a little, I cut a little bit too much on the inside, so I kind of have a line here, but again, I don't think anybody's going to notice because there's a lot of pattern going on, so don't tell. And this is where you can come back in with your pastel pencils and add in color. So I like to, yes, add in a little color and design. I don't want to disturb, again, the ink, so to hold her in place, a little bit of wax paper, and that'll keep my fingers from touching. So these are little things that you can do, adding color before you shrink. You can always add some color after you shrink as well, but I find it's easiest also to get it where it's going to shrink down. You have that amazing detail, which is so much fun. Wow, your friends and all that kind of stuff. So, so see, very simple to do. So now I would take this and I just use a toaster oven. It's set at 325 and I put her in there. Make sure and preheat it and have it at an even temperature. Don't put it in there while it's preheating because then you might have some issues. I also have a piece of parchment paper or one of those silicone craft sheets in there. You really don't want to put this down on the metal of the tray. Don't just put it on the grill of the toaster, put it on the tray. It's going to shrink up, curl up. You're going to think it's all completely wrecked, but give it some time. It'll lay back down, be mostly flat. That's when you want to pull it out of the oven and quickly put, I use a tile, you can use a heavy book, something like that with a little weight to it and press down on it to completely flatten it. And then you will have a piece like this. And like I said, the ink bonds and it's going to look pretty great. I want to show you right here, if my camera will let me, can you see this little bit? Right there, a little red edge. That's where my hot little hands kind of went over the edge and turned it. So, like I said, that's what happens. Not that big of a deal. But that's how you do just a basic stencil. So now I'm going to um, show you a couple of other combinations of things that you can do with the stencils as well. So, be right back. Okay, I wanted to show you how even these stencils that are very, very finely detailed work just really well with the shrink plastic. So this one is S339 by Lefleur. Get a little something there. So again, I'm going to... I like things to be sort of offset. I don't, they don't always have to be centered. So again, she's wax papers taped over her. Tape my stencil down. I'm going to use the pigment ink, the color box ink again. Now, this one is there's going to be a whole lot of color with the design. It's going to be that very fine line. So it's pretty, pretty nifty. Mm -hmm. This is also just a great range of colors on this particular set of inks. Whoops. All right, that jumped a bit. Let's see, she jumped a bit. Not always. 
is foolproof. Of course it would be on the really finely detailed one because that's just the way it goes. All right, let's try that. Maybe I'll stick her toe down next time. Mainly I haven't done it because I don't want the ink to be disturbed by the tape, but she's moving quite a bit. Of course, this worked perfectly the other day when I was making the samples. Had no problem whatsoever. It's when everybody's watching that it all goes to heck in a handbasket. All right, let's try that last little bit. Yeah, she jumped around a little bit, but we'll still love her anyway. Having a paper towel handy is good. Extra ink off. Let me zoom in just a bit and I'll show you. This is where I like to take a micron pen and add a little detail. So again, being careful not to try and touch too much. This is a 0.01 micron pen. And I just like to go in and kind of do some doodling in my open spaces. Because again, it looks pretty cool when this shrinks down and these little pen marks, which are already very fine, become even finer. So just some things to kind of help the design maybe stand out a little bit or add a little bit of more, add a little more visual interest. So, and I found that even when they curl up and touch, you really don't get any ink transfer. So don't worry about it. You don't have to really treat this with any way before you put it in the oven. So we'll set that one aside as well. Move on to our next sample. All right, this time I stuck a little bit of tape on her toe and we'll see how that works at the end, see if she'll stop hopping around. Now I want to show you one using the dye-based Stazon ink. I love this alphabet stamp, and the number on this one is S521 by Dube. Dube, sorry, Dube. And um, it's like small alphabet blocks or something. But again, try to position it where you think you'll kind of get the most visual impact. You can see I've used this once before. This definitely stays on, does not come off. It is permanent, but this gives you a really great saturated 
black that I really like. These cosmetic sponges are great because they'll you can wash them after you use them and reuse them again and again. And I'm going to go ahead and load this up because I really want it to be black when it shrinks. No ifs, ands, or buts. hands are I get a little nervous when I do these videos and my hands are a little sticky I'm sure that's more than you needed to know about my personal hygiene right now <laughs> again this works out you know I have no problem whatsoever when I'm making the samples and just doing my thing by myself now she's got so many layers of tape and such, it's hard to see what to move to get her to back in, get back in place. That's just completely off. Okay, nobody move. Almost there. I'm going to really load it up so I don't maybe have to move it again. <laughs> That's why I don't do manicures. <laughs> okay, now I now have dye based black ink on that fingernail for the duration. Again, my mask is a little bit, but I kind of like it. She looks very mod, <laughs> not in a B. Arthur kind of way. Um, let's see if this does anything to the ink. Let me take it off. Hey, didn't do anything. So if you want to taper down outside of the area that's stenciled, then that looks like it will work. See, you learn something new every day. Now I. I really like the black and white of this. I don't want to change anything, but I do have a thing for stripes. In fact, I have a, a group on Facebook called Stripe Stocking Studio Space. I collect imagery of little kids and stripe stockings. And so I think I want to give her some stripes. So I'm just gonna take a Sharpie. And if she will just hold still Give her some stripes. Like so. And there you go. So she's all ready to hit the oven. All right, for this sample, we're going to do a little combination action here. So I'm going to use this S098 by Swatton. I think Swatton Flowers, which you shouldn't swat flowers. They're, they're nice. We all like flowers. And I did tape her head and her feet this time. And we're going to see what happens if she just still decides she needs to wiggle. So I'm going to use my color box. Neighbor's dog is barking and has been for the last 20 minutes. I don't know if you've been able to hear that, but I apologize. You would think whatever he's barking at would have gone by way by now, but nope. So I'm going to put a nice coating of this spring green. Okay, 
Now I'm going to pick up my stencil and hopefully shift it just a smidge to one side or the other. I'm going to choose to the right side. I probably shouldn't have picked it up quite that much. Sorry if my head gets in the shot. That wax paper is slippery. Let's try it right about here. And now I want to take my metallic silver and stamp, stamp, smudge, paint, dab, <laughs> put silver over it. And hopefully we'll get an interesting effect. I want to cover the green completely. So you might have to go over it a time or two. So hopefully we're left with didn't wiggle that time because we had the tape down which was good but now we have silver and tinted a little bit with the green and then that green outline so this is going to look really great when it shrinks so I'll do a big shrink at the end and a grand reveal so that's another way you can use the stencils I really like that shadowing effect I'm sure there's a proper name for it but I don't know it sorry Actually, I'm sneaking back in because I wanted to show you what you can also do with the Micron pen is add little hand-drawn details to the dress or the outfit. So sometimes I like to come in and accentuate that there's a neckline right here, little sleeves. And of course the Micron comes in a variety of widths, nib widths, and so it can be a lot of fun to play with. You can see right there I got some, I touched her hair with my hot sweaty hands. Do, 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 do. Sometimes I'll come in and just give her a little, I mean if you wanted to draw mustache and glasses you could do that as well, but it's just fun to come in and add some little details because again they're going to shrink and look pretty cute and come in and outline the shoes like so. So it's just fun to add a little hand-drawn element to photographs. See that spot of red right there. So she may get a little extra decoration up in her hairdo later on. Alright, All right. and last but not least I wanted to show you how great these dual stencils are on this particular project, Shrink Plastic. Let's see, I want to do little wheels first. Sorry, this is S065 by Borlos and going to pick a couple of colors that I think will accent each other nicely. I tend to really en enjoy this purple and orange so I'm gonna maybe I should stretch my boundaries. Let's see how about it's gonna take me a minute now because I'm getting out of my comfort zone. How about that one? All right, so, and I did not tape my stencil down. I 
And I'm sorry if I butchered anybody's names on the stencils. I'll, I'll own that. I'm sorry. I try. So this is a nice aqua that we used earlier, so I guess I'm not going too far out of my comfort zone. Hey, out of curiosity, let's let's try doing um, an ombre type thing where it's more dense color at the top, lightens towards the bottom. Not ombre. So now you're speaking Spanish and saying man. Mad skills and creating. It's kind of hard seeing it through the stencil. Just know we have it really dark up here. Really light down there. Cool. That's not too bad. Let's peek. Maybe a little more. Again, this is, you know, playtime. You never know what's going to look really good, what's going to look really bad. It happens. Just have to be free, feel free to explore. So now I want to seat this one on top. Can she do it? I have to think. I want... Little middle parts to fit. There we go. But I need to move it over more so I have enough of the little sunbursts. It's hard, folks. I mean, it's super easy. Everybody should do it. Again, it's with when people are watching, it's so different. There we go. And it all looks clear. That's, that's, can you see how that lined up? And maybe note to self, have some pieces of tape ready to go because you get it in position. You don't want to lose it Oop, like that. Okay. Takes a steady hand. I'm sorry if my head gets in a shot. All right. That was, that was work. I'm going to try to decide on this. Ooh, don't like that. I'm not a really super bright yellow fan, sorry. Super bright yellow fans. Now the question is, do we make the melon an ombre type thing too? I guess we probably should, right? Or do we throw caution to the wind and make it bright all the way down? Let's see. Hey, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Sometimes you have pleasant surprises. No, I mean, I totally planned that. It was going to look like that all along. I really like that one. But yeah, those that fit together and you can do several colors within the design stencil, I think is pretty nifty. So I'm going to go pop all these gals in the oven and then come back and just a few more tidbits on finishing them up and then what you what you can use them to create. So back in a GIF. All right, so here we have our finished stenciled girlies. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you definitely want to spray these with a coat or two of a matte finish acrylic spray sealer to seal those colors. I found that 
even after they've been baked, even though these colors are baked on and you can't really scratch them off, moisture, humidity will still interact with the inks and make them do funky things. So get those sealed. In the matter of the one with the metallic ink, I would probably use a glossy just to retain the shine on your ink. But look how pretty that is. Just a nice, interesting finish. Very subtle. I really like the graphic nature and graphic in a good way of uh, this. I love this alphabet stencil. This is still just my favorite, favorite stencil. And what you can do, what I like to do, and you can do it too if you want to, I love stickles. And so a lot of times I'll go back in and just put a touch, it's a glitter glue, but it allows you to put just a tiny bit if it'll come out of the, which I should have checked before I started the filming. There we go. But you can just kind of give it a kiss. Just a little tiny bling. That gives it just a little bit of sparkle. And it dries flat, which is nice. So, Let's see. Now I have to say of uh, the experiments I ran today, I love how this one turned out. I just think the colors work so well and it's just such a great stencil. And then as I was talking about how the details just get so, come on and focus, it's looking back here. Look up here, there we go. Just the fine detail that you get when these shrink down, I just think is amazing. That stencil's already such a, a filigree type and then putting the little accents in, it's just a lot of fun. So I also used, when I was playing around with this, a couple of other ones that I really liked, which I don't know where it went. Um, ba -ba -da -da -da. Again, prior planning. <laughs> It'll be listed in the, on the blog post, but I just, I loved the, again, the graphics on this one. And I tried to come back and use a metallic Sharpie to put some little accents on and it sort of bled and wasn't very metallic. So that was kind of an eh, but I still like how it turned out. It was, and this was using a pigment ink. And then I used this, whoops, S590 by Fingal, Fingal. Sorry again, butchering the names, but had a lot of fun using that one, coloring in with the pastel pencils. And um, that one's just a lot of fun to work with. And last but not least, I always like handwriting. So again, this is by Dube uh, S262 with the handwriting and that makes a nice look as well. So just all sorts of things to play with when you're playing with these stencils. Scale, it's up to you. I mean, I, I think it's fun sometimes to have really big designs on small things. You know, there's certainly a lot that you could you know, use a central element and a larger stencil on this. But once you have these plastic pieces, then it's really easy to, here's a little something I whipped up with a um, little ornament I found at Joann's. Just put some paper in it, and this is one of the girls with the alphabets and some little flowers, and I kind of set her up so she's dimensional. So that makes a nice little hanging piece. Or this is one of the first pieces I created for a class I did called Dainty Dioramas. And it has that CG stencil, which I just think is phenomenal. But, and see there, her dress was a gingham and it still gives a nice subtle pattern. So there's just a lot to do with these, this marriage of stenciling on the shrink plastic. And I hope this gave you lots of ideas, things to experiment and play with and just go and have fun, maybe a different way to use the stencils that you have or an opportunity to go and find some new ones. So thank you all for watching and have a good time playing with the stencils. I never know how to end those. Bye just seems so blah. And then I try and come up with a little speech and then I forget it halfway through. So just thanks. <laughs> Oh wait, I got all excited. I found that stencil and it doesn't have a number or name on it.
figures. So I will research it and I will list that on the blog post. Okay, this time I'm really leaving. Bye. Mm -hmm.